are just finishing up a hunt on a property that uh, when I first started hunting out in this area, it brought back memories from the late 80s. And, you know, interesting memory, and this is going to be a little controversial subject, maybe a controversial video, but um, I was sitting on this property over here. This is another property that, that we hunt on now. And there are previous uh, hunters that were here that hunted on this land. I was sitting in a stand down here. And it was one of the first years we were first sets. Um, you know, we were hunting here. And uh, I heard that putt, putt, putt of the ATV coming. And of course it wasn't coming on the land we were hunting, but it was within a few hundred yards. And right away I thought back to my uh, teenage years in Michigan in the late 80s and, uh, and how the neighbor would ride a big red, it was ATC, and he would ride into the end of the river bottom that was about three quarters of a mile away. And within 20 minutes I'd have up to 30 deer go by. And same thing here, now this was in 2003, 2002, heard the putt, putt, putt of an ATV, and sure enough, here comes 25 deer coming by. And over the years, and working with clients, like I, you know, I mentioned all the time, I've worked with around 700 clients in 25 states, and one of the biggest problems I see with landowners is the ATV use and using machines. And, you know, I'm, I've experienced that here. I've experienced that in the UP of Michigan. I hunted out in the swamps out there. I think I'm gonna hunt back on public land there this year too. And you hear those ATVs all around on opening day of gun season. And then I'm seeing all those deer out in the middle of the swamps a mile in, three quarters of a mile in. And they can do major damage to your hunt, to your land, to your efforts. And the big problem with ATVs is that um, the uh, does can be very misleading and very deceiving. Because you can drive by does, small bucks, young bucks, and they'll just stand there and watch you. And they give you that illusion that everything's okay. And um, it, it, it kind of lulls you into this false sense of security that every time I'm out on my ATV, it's fine. You know, the deer get used to the ATVs. Well, yeah, young bucks, does, fawns, they get used to those ATVs. But, um, you know, if you're like me, I like hunting the older bucks in the area. I like developing a good herd on the property. I like maintaining a herd on the property. And I know for a fact this property right here is 40 acres. When, they, when the old uh, guys that hunted here before, when they'd bring that ATV up and drop a couple guys off to go hunt, they would literally clear every single deer off this property over to the neighbors. And we were the neighbors at that time. And now we're on the receiving end, we get it back. Now it's flipping around again. And so the bad thing is you just don't know how many deer that you, you spook off the land. And in case here, they actually spooked the deer off this property before the ATV even rode onto the property. It was when they were just leaving from their house, circling around, and then all the deer would come over to us. So they, they had never had an idea, and I'm sure they thought, well, the ATV doesn't spook anything. Um, I remember they brought a tractor up one time, up the hill, to drop hunters off. People say, well, a tractor doesn't spook anything. Well, that's fine out in the ag fields, and I've done that before. I've even used a pickup truck where I had my wife drop me off at a stand location on the fence row with a pickup truck, I actually stepped off the rail onto the tree, went up, great, great method. The deer are used to machines out in the ag fields, but they're not used to a tractor three times a year coming up this hill to drop hunters off. So it's really out of place, and the same with the ATVs. So think about your ATV use. Um, it is a major hindrance for landowners reaching the potential of your land, and, I, and I'm talking 50%. You know, you're gonna have half the herd that you would. You're gonna have half the hunt half the age structure if you're using an ATV. Sure, those little bucks and does and fawns, they're, they're okay with that. They'll move around and they can take a lot more stress. But the older mature buck gets, the more he ages, the less that he can take, the less stress that he can take, the more reclusive he wants to be, the more remote bedding he wants to be. He's just not gonna tolerate ATV use. There are a lot of electric machines out there. We have electric bikes, the quiet cats. Um, they have the electric uh, side-by-sides. And those are a great option for something other than, you know, an ATV that you can hear from a half mile away coming in and spooking deer. Um, even a vehicle, a truck. You know, I noticed up in the UP of Michigan where I was at, and landowner or, or hunters that are hunting on public land, they'd fire up the ATVs from camp, drive four miles down the road and cut into the back roads, you know, half mile and park. And you could hear them coming from a mile away across the swamps. Well, with a, with a truck, they could have driven into those same spots, ultra quiet, been warm the whole time. I have to worry about that cold wind on their face. And so consider having very quiet access getting into your land. And I'd rather be coming in very, very quiet and spook a buck that's near my tree stand that had no clue that I was coming in 
than Spookum before I even drove onto the property. So consider how you're getting in and out of your land. I'd rather move through here like a predator and be very stealthy, be very quiet. And I always think it's, if you're looking at a choice between very loud and ATV use or being quiet, stealth is always your number one option.